Hey, uh, Shana here, and I wanted to answer one of the questions that I commonly get asked, which is, could you send me an application? And the answer to that is, no, I really don't do applications. I like to talk to people and to build a relationship with them, to kind of see where they are and what they need, what they're looking for, and if we're a good match. And it's not like a interview or anything like that. It's just like, two new friends talking on the phone about a topic that we both have an interest in. And from that, I usually get a sense of where you're located. So that'll tell me if I can ship to where you are or some places like the UK have a long quarantine and I won't ship out of the country to the UK because it's too hard on the dog, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, I get ideas about how much you might know about the Bouvier and how much I might need to support you with that. So... Um, you know, my brother used to tell me a long time ago, he was joking, but it's pretty true. Ask me no questions, he used to say, and I'll tell you no lies. So ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. And that means like if I gave you a written application, nine out of 10 times, you're going to have a person lie somewhere on that application. So in the application decision making process that I've kind of decided here for my business, I wanted to uh, find out what do other people ask. And I've been told some pretty crazy things um, show up on these applications. And I just kind of want to, you know, I wrote them down here. I kept them in an email. And I want to go over those with you and kind of give you my feeling and response about it. So where are you located? Please send your full name, address, and phone number. Due to the pandemic, we do not make house checks. And for the safety of the puppy, we we need to know where do you live because we're going to google earth you and figure out if you actually live in that house and what it looks like when the google earth went by so i don't i don't feel comfortable with that um you know i just am not it's 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 too much detail that i i need to know who you are and what kind of person you are in general and what you need but not like your bank account and how well you keep um keep house so there are a couple of questions before we go further and that would be how many dogs do you have right now and are they spayed neutered what breed are they and how old are they and that's something that usually you volunteer to me when we get on the phone and um you know, I find those things out to figure out how well is a Bouvier going to fit in with the gender of the dogs or the, the state of the dogs that you currently have? Or do I need to warn you that uh, there could be some possibility of breeding and crossbreeding that you, we need to be careful about? Um, so that's something that just comes up in conversation. Um, do you have any children? What are their ages? If they are young, are they trained to respect pets? And um, are you married? Are you divorced? Um, you thinking about getting divorced? Because if you are, we got a custody issue over this dog. And you need to remember, the dog comes back to me if you guys are fighting over it. You can't just give it to your friend or your sister. So, um, yeah, that's something, again, that just seems invasive to me. But you will probably tell me if you have kids. And we will kind of discuss the nanny nature of the Bouvier and how well it might fit in and picking the right temperament to match your household. Um, who is your vet? I, I, I've been asked that as a breeder too. Who is your vet? And what's your veterinarian's phone number? And how long have you been to this vet? If it's been less than three years, you probably should give me the name of your previous vet because there's probably something going on there that you switched vets. So um, I don't call vets for references. Um, most of the time before people call a vet, they typically call me and I give them a hand and I can point them in the right direction. I've used a lot of vets across the country. I've met many, many, many veteran veterinarians. <laughs> so, um, that situation, um, kind of like, what difference does it make if you switch vets to me? Um, might be for the better that you switch vets. So, uh, how often will the pup go to the groomer? Give me the name and phone number of your groomer. Um, you're going to know because we're going to talk about the fact that I take my dogs every four to six weeks to get groomed. 
and I comb them through um, two, three times a week. So we'll talk about that maintenance and that's in some of the introductory videos that I recommend for you. So it's, uh, you're gonna do what you wanna do when you get home and what you can afford to do. And I'm only hoping that I've set some realistic ideas about what costs are, what timing is. And honestly, for a long time, I spent more on my dog's grooming than I did my own hair. So I wasn't getting the best uh, highlights and lowlights, but my dog was getting some amazing grooming and hair care. So um, when you go on vacation, have you thought about where the puppy is going to stay? Um, that isn't like, um, yeah, that just is again, something if we needed to discuss it, we could have that conversation over the phone. A lot of times people call me back and ask if I can board their dog. I do not have a boarding license for, for people to come and stay. I also, or dogs to come and stay. Um, I also don't have a kennel at this time, an outdoor kennel. So I'm not a boarding option, unfortunately, but, um, I can tell you what to look for if you need some help finding a boarding facility. So, or in my case, I like to have somebody come into my house and help care for my dog so that my dogs are most comfortable and less at risk of picking anything up. Um, will the puppy be an indoor or an outdoor dog? And, you know, you I don't even have to ask that. You usually tell me your intentions and how you've, manage dogs in the past in the part of our conversation. It just, it's natural when people talk to you to let you know if it's a, a working dog and it's on a farm. Um, I might ask, uh, where do you put the dog at night? What are your intentions there? What have you usually done? Um, but other than that, um, not again, something I want to go through on your paperwork. So, and then lastly, what is your age, your health, and can you really handle a young pup? Um, are there any medical issues in your family where the pup should not be placed in your home? And that's sort of trying to be politically correct, saying, um, you know, are you doing any elder care where, you know, maybe somebody would trip over the dog or the dog would trip them with, with a walker? Or do you have somebody with a mental health issue that might injure the dog? Um, no, um, that's your decision to make about your lifestyle in your household. Um, I've actually had people uh, tell me that beyond giving personal references, I've had people offer me their financial references, which I didn't take and don't want. And I think that's a little bit too giving, no boundaries for you to offer those things to me. Um, and then the other thing that, that people have told me is that they've asked for references. People check out their references. Um, anybody can can drum up some references. I'm sure of that. It doesn't mean a whole lot anymore. Um, I'm not going to ask for your credit report. And as somebody else uh, told me, there is a breeder somewhere in America that practically makes you feel like you are giving a blood sample to adopt one of her dogs. So um, I don't think I gave it away there. Most breeders are female, um, middle-aged. Um, but at any rate, um, I like to talk to you, to meet you. Um, I think that's a little harsh for me to send those questions out to you, especially before we've had any conversations together. Um, but I also find it equally uh, a boundary issue and offensive when people are asking me who my veterinarian is. Um, I, I'm glad to show you that my dogs have rabies and vaccinations up to date. Um, be glad to show you my dog licenses. Um, that's a little odd to me, but I'll be happy to make sure that you know the, the parents of the puppy are healthy. Um, I'll be glad to show you for the puppy that I've been taking it for vet checks that I give um, kind of like a receipt almost. It's a, a, a sticker that tells you the vaccination uh, serial number, the lot number, and the expiration date. So you have all that information to give to your vets with a, vet, a vaccination record for your puppy. But, um, you know, asking me other things uh, like that is again, um, it's odd. It's just really odd to me. Sometimes I explained in an earlier video, I have autism and sometimes I feel like uh, I get phone calls from people who aren't diagnosed, but I'm thinking, you got some issues. I don't know if it's autism or what that's going on, but um, I, 
I, I just want to tell you that I'm more than happy to chat with you by phone. I return phone calls, usually 24 to 48 hours. I may be away for a weekend and, and call people back on a Monday. But um, it's good to, to meet you, and I just want to put you at ease that we're not going to both get crazy with each other. We're just going to have a talk, and we're going to see if we can find a good dog to match your good family.